Welcome back to another Instant Reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. Joining me once again is Richie Schneider. Right, Richie, we have our second commit of the class of 2023, Miami, uh, I guess, Fort Lauderdale, Dillard High School's mm-hmm. uh, Chris Johnson. He's a running back. Uh, you actually got to see him in person. Tell us a little bit about who we're getting and uh, how he decided to commit this early. Yeah, I mean, first off, let's talk about that. His second commit took forever. It, I know. <laughs> month. I don't know who posted that, but they 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 willed it into existence. Yeah. So whoever asked that on the asked the experts thread, uh, I guess do that again uh, once a week, <laughs> maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, we actually talked to him down at the. Well, I talked to him down at the Miami camp. Uh, I guess it was a week ago. Um, yeah, a little bit over a week ago now. Um, he kind of told me right away. Rutgers was one of the ones reaching out the most, which was kind of interesting because he was a Fran Brown and a uh, Type One Underwood kid originally. But Allrich took over as soon as those two left, and um, he kind of just went from there. But uh, he told me he was visiting. He told me he was excited about the visit. It's not a one-day visit. It's a two-day visit, which is also a little bit intriguing. Uh, he came in today, got to meet with the staff, got to do all the good stuff, get the photo shoot done, get the uh, – I'm sure you guys have seen on social media the whole video clip thing that they can do now for recruits. It doesn't have to just be photos anymore, which is nice. And the fact that that was a rule is stupid, but besides the point um so then tomorrow he'll come to practice and he'll watch practice and um he'll watch it he'll watch it as a commit so yeah so I mean I think what the first caveat here is I mean he's a Miami kid so who really knows you know if he's going to end up here but uh what kind of level of a com- of a recruit is this guy um I'd say like a, a mid-tier guy I think it's a solid get early on it's a Florida kid um as we know with most Florida uh prospects it's all about speed right now um, he's a state champ track guy, uh, kind of fits to the narrative that they're trying to build with this offense. So it's all going to be about speed. Obviously we just saw them land a late 2022 in Fitzroy Le- Legister, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. One of the harder names to pronounce I've ever come across. It's like the create a character from NCAA football, whoever's played that in the past. And they would just like mash all these names together for the recruits that you try and get. That's a tough one. I, I'm just going to stick to Fitz, I think from now on. I hope you <laughs> I, I That's don't a good call. We'll have to talk to him eventually, but uh, um, yeah, no, I mean, um, track star, uh, speedy guy. He's a little on the smaller side. I think uh, we have him listed at 5'11", 182. I'm working on trying to get the official height and weight from when he was at the Rivals camp. I want to say it's slightly smaller than that because he was closer to my height, and if if the girls are asking, I'm six foot. If uh, anyone <laughs> asks, I'm like, more like 5'10", but we won't talk about yeah. that. Um. Yeah, so uh, he, as far as weight-wise, he's probably in the 170, 180, 80 range, probably around there. He's quick. Um, he's still going to learn a little bit technique-wise. Um, just There was a couple times where, not to knock the kid, but he did handle the ball like a loaf of bread, but that's that's fine. It's all fixable stuff. It's very teachable stuff. So overall, though, it's, it's the speed that uh, really intrigues me. And even in, like, those cat and mouse drills, he just – there's no juke moves. It's just right around the edge. And it's like, all right, well, like, if, it, if you can get away with it, why not? Yeah, for sure. And watching his tape, he does look a little smaller than than 5'11", 180, probably more like 5'9", like 160 right now, which, I mean, he's, what, 15, 16 years old? That's not really a huge deal. Can yeah, put on awesome. some more weight, grow a little bit, but. Um, yeah, I mean, they beat out some good schools, too. I know he was very intrigued by Louisville. Uh, he was supposed to visit them last week. Um, I haven't gotten up, caught up with him yet to find out if he actually did make that visit or not. Um, I know Pittsburgh was interested for a little bit, uh, Indiana, um, Col- he was very interested in coastal too, which I mean, I don't blame him. Myrtle beach. It's, it's right on a beach, literally like, yep. but, uh, yeah. And I mean, uh, Plus they've had a ton of success lately. Yeah. Uh, top 25 program, two years in a row, three years in a row. Yeah. Like Probably going to have two or three guys draft from the, the draft this year. Yeah. I mean, uh, overall it's a solid get. I mean, you beat out a couple power five schools. Um, you can't ever knock that, especially when you want to think about it. What, three years ago before Shiano came, we were talking about beating out G five schools. Hey, you beat out a couple FCS. <laughs> like, yeah. And sometimes not even being able to beat those guys up. I know that's the scary thing, but uh, those days are behind us and um, it's, yep. it's a solid get early on. Just got to be able to hold on to them. Like you said, it's a Miami kid. It's a Florida kid coming up to Jersey. We always know that, um, they're always tricky with their recruitments. I think everyone was sweating the Marion Brown one last year, but they pulled it out, and now he's uh, going to be on campus soon. So, I mean, that's just – He is on campus now. Is he? I don't even remember. Jeez, I'm uh, I'm, I'm still, like, mind-boggled with <laughs> schedules and going out of Miami yeah. and stuff. It's – yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, um, 
I, I think it's a very good get, pretty uh, good get early on get. Yeah, I think this shows a combination of uh, how much they're going to continue to dip into Florida because that was a strong suit of Greg the first time around. And also that this New Jersey class might just either be a combo of not that great and not so receptive to Rutgers this year. So, yeah, I mean, that's um, that's kind of been his narrative. If, if you're not going to get the local guys, it's like, all right, we'll go elsewhere for him. We'll go to New Jersey. Maybe they'll start dipping into Texas a little bit with their new DBs coach back there in Orphe, who has a couple Texas connections or uh, I don't even know. Marquise Watson has connections down to the South now where he was uh, coaching an old Miss. So. I could see this class being a little bit different and kind of being more um, nationally, if you want to call it that. Sure. Um, less regionally, more nationally. And then, uh, there's, of course, there's going to be transfers. So you're going to have to hold. I was talking to someone at practice the other day, and they, we were just BSing back and forth. And he, he was kind of telling me, you, no matter what it is now, you got to hold like at least six, seven, maybe even eight spots for transfers. Look, they just took, what, five portal linemen alone. Yeah. And then add in two receivers. There's seven right there. I'm sure I'm missing something too, but. And there's always going to be those weird scenarios that pop up out of nowhere where a New Jersey kid who actually was playing somewhere and was playing well might yeah. want to come back home and you got to have space for him. Oh, look at Aaron Lewis. They probably were pretty close yeah. to not taking him at one point. And they're like, oh my God, like this kid just popped out of nowhere. Like make room. Someone move. Yep. For but, sure. Uh, yeah. So if you're going to ask me about like what the numbers is on this class, they're just, it's not a thing anymore. I don't think. I think it's just all kind of – I don't think we expected them to take – they're up to like, what, 30-something now or 20, 28 around there for the 2022 class if you include all the, the transfers and the current 18, 19 kids that sign now or 20. Yep. I don't even know what it is now, but it's around that 28 mark. And I, I think before that we were talking 18 max. That's it. Cut it. So Yeah, it feels a bit like the NFL salary cap with – it's been like a, a like a common thing for people to say like it doesn't exist and there's so many ways around it and Greg is definitely one of the best in the business in terms of getting around the the, the salary or the, the salary the uh, <laughs> the scholarship crunches that we seem to always be in but he finds a way yeah um, sure. Chiano math man it's, it's yep. this is also not the first guy that Chiano has landed from uh, Dillard High School he's in the past a long time ago he got uh, Terry Bynes at the twenty. Uh, 2002 class he got Marcus Faison in the 2003 class or the 2002 class as well and he got some guy somebody named Chris McClover in the 25 2005 class so uh, obviously he's got relationships there he's dipping back into Dillard High School yeah I mean I, I forgot to even mention it before the uh the St. Thomas relationship sort of type thing you want to call it that Tommaso Munoz obviously is a QC or defensive assistant I don't really know what his title is they get a new one every year it seems like but uh he was a DB's coach down at St. Thomas a couple years ago. Um, there was an assistant there who is now the D.C. Coach Blue, they call him. Uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. But regardless, he's now the D.C. over at uh, Dillard. And it's another connection there, right, between uh, between getting Florida guys to Rutgers. And it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, as long as you can keep building Florida connections, I don't see <laughs> these Jersey kids aren't going to come start doing it all over again. You're going to see 2006 before you know it, maybe. Yeah, and I just found some uh, track numbers for him on Twitter. Uh, so Chris Johnson won the state 100 meters in Florida, which is no joke. He ran a 10.71 um, in the 100 meters, and he ran a 21.27 uh, in the 200 meters. Yeah. So I, I'm not a track guy. I don't know the context for any of these. It sounds like the numbers are similar to Fitzroy Legister, though. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a state champ track guy, too, so – Exactly. Just keying in on speed, and that's probably, like you said, will continue to be something that they prioritize because it's always been something Greg prioritized. So why yeah. would he change his stripes now? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a little different this time around with um, Gleason running the show. You actually have a spread offense. It's going to involve a lot more speed in general compared to the pro style McNulty ran back in the day. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's been the narrative. I think Gleason said it every time we've talked to him, all, all two times. Um <laughs> It's just been about speed, speed, speed. Get this offense as quick as possible. And th he wants to leave his mark on this offense, too. Um, that's a big thing that he just talked to us about last week. He said, we got to start changing. All right, now we got our installs in the first two years. Now we want to make this the Rutgers offense. We want people to know this is the Rutgers offense. And I think it's – I don't want to compare it to Oregon, but that's like the speediest offense I've ever seen under Chip Kelly back in the day. I yep. think he wants to get to almost to that level, if not close to that level. And – if you can get that level over here in New Jersey, it'd be, it'd be interesting. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, it's easier said than done, though. There's a lot of guys who are very highly rated recruits that went to Oregon yeah. at that time. D- different uh, levels, I guess, if you want to call it that for now. For sure. Um, but that's kind of all we got, guys. This is a, kind of a developing story. Stay tuned to the boards uh, that probably have more information about him. Uh, is there anything else that you want to touch on before we sign off? Um, no, I mean, Ryan just posted an article with him, uh, in depth, uh, a couple quotes, uh, huge get for Allrich. It's a bit, it's a big win for him. A guy that like people weren't talking about too much, um, switched over the running backs and now got his first running back commit. So, I mean, it's a solid get for him. Um, trying to think, I, I guess that's really it. Um, a little NIL rumor starting on the boards. Well, I started on the boards. Um, <laughs> so the Adidas one. Yeah, no, no, no. There's there's some stuff going on behind the scenes. They're going to have some kind of collective going on sooner rather than later. Um, you're starting to see other schools announce stuff, and um, Rutgers will be joining that uh that bandwagon, whatever you want to call it. I guess we'll joining that fray. I guess in the in the future. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's kind of it's another arms race in college football. You got to have a, a a bulky NIL program because if you don't. You know, you're going to lose out on some guys that, unfortunately, yeah. you probably would normally get. Uh, it's, in, it's interesting. It's NIL stuff. It's probably going to push Rutgers out of uh, the hunt for, like, top 100 kids, just given it's, what I've seen for a few kids who've gotten deals, like the kid from Tennessee – or not from Tennessee, the no, California high school quarterback. Yeah, eight going to Tennessee, quarterback. $8 million. But it's like – there's all these stipulations where basically if he leaves Tennessee, he's not going to get anything. Yeah, so, which which makes sense, but I mean, if you're Quinn Ewers, you cashed out already, so who cares, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's probably got another big deal down in Texas selling oh, yeah. Ford Rangers or something. To, there you but. Go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's tough. It is going to be interesting to see how Rutgers adapts to this. Um, and and then like at the end of the day, someone brought up a good point. I don't want to harp on this too much. We can get into this on another episode or something. But someone said you're going to have to make a choice now: are you donating to NIL or are you donating to the new practice facility or the new whatever academic building or something. And I do agree that the best bang for your buck, if you're just purely trying to spend your money to mm-hmm. improve the program, NIL is the way to go because the better mm-hmm. players you get, the better performance you're going to have on the field, the more people that will be attracted to Rutgers football, and that'll just naturally bring in more money. So this is really just, if you're going to point your money somewhere, if you got 500 bucks to spend, mm-hmm. you know, buying a locker and donating it or, you know, dipping into this NIL collective, I'd probably go to the NIL. But that's just me. Yeah, it's tough. You're a business owner. I like that approach, but I, I don't know, man. Something about seeing my name on stuff just makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, if you ever find a way into a, I mean, this isn't fit for you, but if, if you ever find your way into the locker room and see your name on a, a two inch by two inch plaque. Oh, well, yeah, that one's a little different, but I mean, yeah. like, you know, you got the rocking building. It's like, oh, look at that right there. Yeah, but I mean, that's a, you know, that's seven a, figure it, donation versus yeah, no, yeah, that's it's a little different. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, oh, by the way, are you giving day? I don't know if you guys uh donate it yet or not. So, yep, go donate or something. I guess you get to pick what program you get to donate or to or something. Yeah, you can spread it out across basically as many athletic programs as you'd like. So, yeah, dream. Get it on that if you haven't already. But thanks again for tuning in, guys. Uh, also, thank you for. Uh, you know, our last podcast with Pat Hobbs was actually our, our highest uh, listened to podcast ever. So thanks to everyone who shared. Thanks to everyone who is listening for the first time. Um, uh, and we'll see you soon. Yep. Have a good one. This is another edition of the Night Report uh, podcast signing off.